for today's online worship service. We are having the last worship service of this year, and it has been a precious year and a special year. And we want to take the opportunity to start with a longer worship time. And I invite you to come before God and bring everything that has happened this year before Him, to turn our focus towards Him and surrender what has happened and what lies behind of us and everything that lies ahead of us to Him.
Let us pray. Lord God, we come before you on this last Sunday of the year, and we can't help but be aware that 2020 has been a strange year. At the very least, it's been unusual, and probably for many of us, it's been unusual in a way that's not been good. We have been cut off from so many things that bring us life. So many people, so many places, so many things we're used to doing, like coming to church and being with one another. We're thankful that we've been able to do that and yet not as we would like. We've been unable to see friends to, to go to work uh, with our colleagues. And many of us have, have suffered worse than this. We've lost jobs or we've had to, to be in isolation for extended periods of time. So many things, Lord. And we must confess that it's not been a joyful year. We are here today celebrating the joy that you bring in Christmas, in Christ. You teach us to be a joyful people. And we confess that it's, it's been difficult to always be joyful. But joy is found where you abide, where your presence is. And so we pray, Lord, that we would be joyful people even in the midst of our sufferings, our oppression, uh, our frustrations, the, the challenges we face, Lord. May we be joyful because we abide in your hope, confident that although 2020 has been a strange year, that time belongs to you and that the past isn't even really the past until you're done with it, until you've redeemed it. So may you take all of these things and be at work in them as you have been to bring about your good ends. And Lord, we do enter a new year hopeful that you will do great things. Lord, we pray that you restore us to one another, that you continue to be upholding our church. We want to be together again for our sakes, for the sake of this community, for the sake of, of your church, Lord, and for your own sakes, that we may praise you. Lord, bring us together again, we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture is from Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was a righteous and devout and was eagerly awaiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all peoples. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people, Israel. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, but he will be a joy to many others. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. This is the word of the Lord. It is a strange thing in this year to, to come to the end and to reflect upon the joy that uh, was in that first Christmas, that first uh, birth of Christ as he comes to the temple to be dedicated and, and therefore also to encounter people looking for joy, 
waiting for God to work and to act. And although our celebration of Christmas has come to an end, uh, we've opened our presents, we've had our fun and hopefully our food, and hopefully that was really good for you. But the living out of the Christmas story really has just begun. It is what we have in, in front of us. It's what we are called to do. And every day is an opportunity to experience and express that joy uh, in the world around us and to the people around us. You know, joy is not dependent upon the calendar. It is dependent and reflective of what God has done through the coming of Jesus in this little baby who grew up to be a great man, who revealed the reality of God's love and joy given to people. And in the encounter between Simeon and Mary and Joseph, and if you add on that the next few verses that we didn't read about Anna, they speak to the impact that this child would have on the world. That he is a light to reveal God. Wow. Scripture again and again talks about people in darkness, people who can't see, people who don't know what's there, but Jesus is that light so that God can be seen by us. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, not just to the Jews, but to all people, and that he is the glory of God's people, Israel. In seeing Jesus, Simeon can say, I have seen God's salvation here in front of me in this little child. This is the rescue of God. His words are spirit-inspired. They come from God, not from himself. These words are prophetic about what is and what will ultimately be. And his words are praise for this gift of God in this moment that he has with Jesus. This knowledge he has, this experience of Jesus that he now has, he wants to share with others. And that's one of the things that happens with joy, isn't it? Is joy overflows out of us. It can't be held in by neither Simeon or Anna. It has to be proclaimed and shared to be fully experienced. Two words that come to my mind as I reflected on this passage uh, were first sober. This child is God's salvation. That's a thought stopper. This little baby, in him is the salvation of God. Wow. Amazing. And the second word, word is Joyful. Joyful because this one is God's salvation for us. It's come, it's here, it's available, it's accessible. What an amazing thing that we take for granted, but in many ways they didn't because they were looking and they were waiting and they were longing, which is what we do in Advent, so that we can rejoice and celebrate with God's salvation even though everything isn't right, even though Simeon looks towards his death. He knows that God's salvation is here and has come, and he can rejoice in that moment. It says many in Israel will, and peoples, all the peoples, will embrace him for who he is, God's salvation. And they will experience the joy of that. But also that many in Israel and other peoples will oppose him as God's salvation. Some will rise some will fall solely on an encounter with Jesus, on how they see him, who he is. They will either have joy or sorrow because of how they experience Jesus. In Jesus, people will encounter salvation, which always leads to a response. Have you ever noticed that with Jesus? If you read the Gospels, if you get a chance over the next few days, read the Gospels and just see every time Jesus is with people, there's a decision point. Believe or not believe. Is this true? Is this not true? More than any other person, 
Jesus always leads to that point where we must decide, and that deci- decision leads us in a direction. It doesn't have to be forever. There are opportunities again and again to decide, you know what, I think I was wrong. I think I would make a different choice. We have that for a limited period of time, but we have it. But Jesus, are, we always are confronted with a decision to believe, to follow. And it's interesting in that what is hidden in our hearts, what you and I can't see in each other's hearts, Jesus reveals. By the encounter with him, our actions, our words, the direction that we go shows what's in us. It's a little terrifying that one person could have so much power to determine our lives. But really, it's just a reflection of of who we are, of where we are, of how we look at or don't look at and see God at work. One thing that Simeon and Anna have in common is when they recognize who this Jesus is, that he is the Christ, that they share it with other people. They want others to know, to hear, to come to Jesus and to have the opportunity to to give thanks and to have the joy that they have in encountering God's salvation through Jesus. And they invite others to discover that joy by telling them who Jesus is why he is here, and what he can do. That's what they do when they encounter Jesus and they have the joy, the joy of their salvation. Jesus is the salvation that God has for all the people. All the people. And so I wonder today the circle of relationships that you have, which is probably over 100 people in some way, shape, or form, I wonder if there are people in there that maybe you say, the salvation of God, I see it. It's clear. And maybe some people we look at and say, not possible. They would never want God's salvation. The reality is we don't know what's in the heart. We are not the choosers. It is our responsibility, our privilege, like it was for Simeon and for Anna, to the, in the appropriate time, in the appropriate way to share the joy of this salvation in Jesus and let Jesus be the one that shows the fork in the road, whether they rise or whether they fall. Let us be like them who through our joy share the joy of Jesus in our life with them. Jesus is the light that reveals God to all of the people. It is this light that shows our heart. That takes away the hiddenness that he and we can see what's really there. Some of us are really good at hiding what's in our heart and others not so much. But Jesus always reveals. And one of the reasons we want to share the joy that we have in Jesus, we want people to see who Jesus is so that that their hearts can be revealed because sometimes we don't even know what's there. But as that light of God comes in, the opportunity to see and to change and to move in a different direction, to receive grace, forgiveness, and love, to have hope, is given to us in this salvation, in this one, in this Jesus. And so I wonder today as we move into the next year, who may be in your circle of friends? Have you already decided what's in their heart? That it's not really worth the risk or the time or the energy to share. I know there's people that I've done that to. I haven't really thought through it, but if I had the choice, I might go, mm, I, don't think, I don't think it's for them. But it's for all the people. All the people. All the nations are invited to come to Jesus. So let us not be the ones who choose and decide. Let us be the ones who enjoy Share this joy of Jesus with other people around us. And Jesus is a reflection of God. 
He is the reflection of his glory. And I think what this passage is, is getting to is that the people of Israel, God's people that he rescued and brought out of Egypt and gave a land, were supposed to be the ones that were his glory, that reflected his goodness, and yet they never could do it. They always failed. Try as they might. Does that remind you of someone? Like the person in the mirror? Reminds me of the person in the mirror. And yet this passage tells us that Jesus is the one who is the reflection of God's glory, who is the one that people will be drawn to and say, that's what I'm looking for. I want that kind of life. That's where joy is found. They will see the greatness, the glory, the beauty in Jesus that they don't see in us. What we could never be, Jesus is. And so we share Jesus with them, not us, not my wisdom, but the gift of salvation that is in Jesus for us and for them. To hear who Jesus is and to embrace him as God's salvation is what brings us joy because our hearts become thankful, become free. The darkness is wiped away. The light has come and seen and still loved us and forgiven us and called us into this new and wonderful relationship as God's beloved children. To hear who Jesus is and to embrace him, that is God's salvation. I think of the Christmas carol that goes like this, Joy, joy to the world, the, earth, the Lord has come, let earth Reveal her king. And this is what this is. Joy leads to the revealing, the showing of who Jesus is, the celebrating of who he is. Joy to the world because he is the one who brings joy, who frees, who saves, and rescues. We want to receive the king who is Jesus. I think sometimes we forget the joy that we had in our first moment of salvation, those first days or weeks. It seems to fade. We seem to maybe be focused on other things, and so this is a great time for us as we come out of Christmas to again rekindle that sense of joy, that sense of wonder, that sense of amazement that this salvation is in a person and in Jesus, and he's in us. And through us, he can be shared with others in the world. That Jesus is the light of God, so that people can see and experience him. They can be freed and forgiven. They can be true sons and daughters, heirs of all that God is, and all that God has can be given to them and to us. Simeon reminds Mary, reminds us that there will be sorrow in this world. Not everyone's going to embrace Jesus for who he is. And that will bring great sorrow, especially to his mother, Mary. But it will also be a world that is filled with joy. As people see and hear the joy of Jesus proclaimed that he is the Savior, the one who gives us life. And as they respond, they too will be freed. And so let us be the people of joy. Let us be the people who share that joy with those around us. And if we've lost that joy, let us go back again to this little baby given by God, expressing the love of God and the rescue of God and the commitment of God for us, although we don't deserve it. And let us have again that joy rekindled in our hearts, even in the midst of a pandemic, especially in the midst of a pandemic. Because people need to see joy, and guess what? Joy is in Jesus. No matter what the circumstances, joy is in him. So let us follow the Christmas holiday by the story and the message and the joy of Christmas in our life. Lived with each other. Lived with the others around us. Live in a way that shows the joy that we have. Lived in a way that we are speaking the joy that Jesus has brought to us and that he offers to other people. Rescue, salvation, 
peace, forgiveness, meaning, hope, joy. Do you bow your heads with me as we pray? Father, we give you thanks for this amazing gift that we often look by at Christmas. We can be so busy with the food and the fun and the family and the challenges and lots of different things that we forget where life is found. We celebrate because you are worthy of a celebration in what you have given us in Christ. And so, Lord, turn our hearts again to those who have this joy because we have received Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. And, Lord, if we have forgotten what that joy is about, remind us of this great gift that has been given to us, that has freed us. And in thankfulness, let us be reintroduced into joy, the joy of our salvation. And then let us share it. Empower us, Holy Spirit, we pray, for that work at the end of this year and especially in this new year that we would be the people proclaiming the joy that Jesus brings. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Open up your mind, believe it. Open up your heart, receive As you go today, go into a world that is filled with the joy of God. Salvation is there because Jesus is with you and in you. And through you, make sure that you take the time to share that joy with others. Go in that knowledge. Go in the peace and love of God. Go in the strength and the power and the forgiveness of Christ. And go lay in the Holy Spirit. Lead your feet and your hands and your mouth to speak of the joy that you have. Amen. Thanks so much for being here with us. Have a great, great week. God bless.